Ever wonder why heat and humidity tends to go hand in hand? Hmm. How a hot summer heat wave pretty much also means you're going to step outside and feel sticky and gross? And in the winter, it can be so dry that you have to reach for the chapstick or lotion just to keep yourself from shriveling up. There are exceptions to this, of course, and when it happens, it's kind of weird. Like that dry heat in Phoenix, Arizona that turns you into beef jerky, or that wet cold in Seattle, Washington that just sinks deep into your bones. So what's happening here? What's the deal between temperature and moisture? Believe it or not, how moist the air is is actually different from how humid the air is. Huh? Moisture is how much water in the form of gaseous water vapor is present in the air. It is an objective, measurable quantity that can be compared regardless of temperature. On the other hand, humidity is how much water is in the air relative to how much the air can hold, which changes depending on the temperature. Warmer air can hold more water than cooler air. This is why a common measure of humidity is called relative humidity, because it is relative to the temperature. The best way to visualize this is to compare two boxes of air. One box contains cold air, where the air molecules move slowly and are closer together because it's cold. The other box contains warm air, where the air molecules move faster and are farther apart because it's warm. The warmer air has more space to hold water vapor molecules, so warm air often has more moisture. In contrast, there's less space in the box of cold air to hold water vapor molecules, so cold air is often drier. A common way to describe how much moisture is in the air is the concept of dew point, or dew point temperature. It is the temperature the air would have to cool to in order for the box of air to become saturated, meaning for it to max out on how much water vapor it can hold. If saturated air is forced to cool further, it starts to wring out the water vapor it's holding, which results in the condensation of liquid water. This is what happens when you wake up in the morning to dew on the grass. It's literally the water vapor getting wrung out of the air as it's cooled below its saturation temperature overnight. So the dew point temperature is a measure of how much moisture is in the air. The higher the dew point, the more moisture the air contains. The lower the dew point, the less moisture it contains. For example, if it's 80 degrees outside with a dew point of 70 degrees, that means that if you were to cool the air down to 70 degrees, the water vapor in the air would start to condense into liquid. Notice how this measure of moisture using the dew point has nothing to do with the actual air temperature. Air with a 70 degree dew point is always more moist than air with a 30 degree dew point, regardless of the actual air temperature. This is why your local evening weather report likes to use dew point, because it is an objective measure of moisture regardless of the temperature. So now you might be wondering, why do we talk about humidity then? How is that any different from moisture? Well, earlier we said that humidity is how much water is in the air relative to how much the air can hold. This is important to know because air that maxes out in how much moisture it can hold, or saturated air, is what gives us condensation in the form of dew, clouds, and fog. But how much moisture the air holds changes depending on the temperature. So that means humidity is more than just a function of moisture, but of both moisture and temperature. This is why the most common measure of humidity is called relative humidity, which is a percentage. Air with a relative humidity of 100% is fully saturated, meaning it can no longer fit any more moisture for that specific temperature. Air with a relative humidity of 50% is only at about half capacity for how much moisture it can hold for that specific temperature. The actual equation that converts relative humidity to dew point is the stuff of nightmares. But we can visualize this temperature dependency of how much moisture the air can hold with this simple example. Imagine a beaker filled about halfway with water. This beaker represents how much the air can hold at a given temperature. The water represents the moisture content. So, this first beaker is a visual representation of 50% relative humidity. Now, let's say the air is warmer, represented by a larger beaker that doubles in size compared to the first one. If we kept the same amount of water in that larger beaker, notice how the relative humidity drops to 25%. So the same amount of moisture in air that is warmer actually becomes less humid. If we assign dew points to each of these first two beakers, they'd be the same because there's the same amount of water in each beaker. So this is why dew point is a more objective measure of moisture content. Now, let's say it gets really cold so the beaker becomes much smaller. It's so small that some of the water actually condenses into a cloud and rains out. In this case, inside a cloud, when the beaker is filled to the brim regardless of how small it is, the relative humidity is 100%. Notice how the relative humidity can be 100%, but there is actually less water or moisture compared to the other two beakers? This is why you can have a cloudy, snowy day in the winter still feel drier compared to a sunny, 
hot summer day. The cold air can simply hold less moisture than in the summer. If we were to take this last beaker and warm it up significantly without adding any more moisture, we'd be left with a dry heat, which is what we find in the desert southwest. But further east, the warm air gets fed a constant supply of moisture out of the Gulf, which is why the summer on the east coast is much more humid. In the Pacific Northwest, the supply of moisture coming out of the Pacific, particularly in the winter months, leads to moist air closer to saturation. When combined with the cold, we get this wet cold that the area is known for. So the next time you turn on the evening news or open up your favorite weather app, you now know the difference between dew point and relative humidity.